I've come down through Kingswood to Roach Abbey. You find these stepping stones just before you arrive at Roach Abbey. And I'll take you down to the waterfall as well. Great place to sit quietly and contemplate. I've done previous videos of Roach Abbeyman on a beautiful day like this. I thought it'd be perfect to do a video today. See Roach Abbey just sort of out of the trees over there. I'll just turn it off until I get back out to Roach. Alright, so we're coming towards Roach Abbey. Give you a view from that angle. And then we'll pick up right at the front on the meadow. So we're now at Maltby Dyke, I think it's called. I don't know the proper river name is. Another great place to come and relax. Now the actual site's shut at the moment, but it should open, I think, early April. It's run by English Heritage. They sort of rent it off the landowners and then they show the public around and make money out of it. But I know they were cutting the grass on it yesterday. I'm going to take you around and show you different angles of it. So I'm actually on the meadow at the moment. You can get an idea of it, what remains of it. Don't think I need to talk, tell you about the history of uh, Emery the Eighth. I'm going to go further up and give you another shot of it. From so this is the sort of meadow where the animals graze, and then I'm trying to give you a shot from above. There would have also been the houses and farm where the animals were kept for all the monks when this was a Sistine monastery. It must have been absolutely beautiful. Just can't imagine how big it would have been in this valley. I would say pretty much a lot bigger than Sheffield Cathedral in the city centre. So I'll drop back down and just get the idea of the uh, majesty of it and the brickwork. But you can walk right around this site on a public footpath and if you want to go in you'll have to go in in visiting hours I think that's sort of between April and October I'll show you the board when we get round I just love the brickwork on this quite some craftsmanship you get a better angle in a minute when we uh, get to the corner but you can see where it's been taken from I'm 
really gives you an idea, you can see just how used the place was. It's a shame with Sheffield Castle that was sacked after the Civil War. Such a shame. Bit of a thorn in the side of the parliamentarians, Cromwell. But when you think about Cromwell, I don't think it was just really on the side of the people. Because they brought the king back in a few years later. And it's funny because there's an estate around here called Galley Knight's Estate. And uh, the guy who was sort of second in command to Cromwell. actually put the king back on the throne. He went down to London and put him back on the throne. So we've got quite a bit of local history around here. But... So the visitor centre is actually up here. And I'll show you the actual times on the visitor centre in a minute. So that's the visitor centre. And it opens from 27th of March which is Sunday, Mother's Day. And then it closes, I think, in November. So it's run by English Heritage. They've not got the admission charges on at the moment. But this area was the gatehouse to the Abbey. I'll just show you inside, you can see what it looked like. And what would have happened is the poor people would have been waiting at this side for an handout of food. Just give me another idea of the craftsmanship. If you ever want to come here, you can actually get down and park here from the road. It's only open at certain times. It's a gate that comes across at a certain time and stops you coming down with your car. But you can always walk in at any time or cycle in at any time. So that was a gate house. The poor would have waited here for the food. And there's a story about this house here. I think some girl got pregnant, I might, might not be 100% sure on it, and then ended up hanging herself. Because it would have been seen as a really bad thing to do in those days. That's the story I've got, and her ghost's supposed to haunt the place, but if that's not true, or it's quite a bit, a bit different to that, please fill me in. I'm told here that if you come on certain days, you'll see kingfishers around. I've never managed to see any kingfishers but I'm assured by people who are into bird watching that this strip of water encourages them at times of the year and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back round and show you the angle from the other side of Roach Abbey which I think gives you the best angle on the whole site so I think this is the best angle on Roach Abbey. You can see the most of it. So I'm on the sort of back side of it. And I'll zoom in a bit for you. If you've never been before, it's definitely worth paying to go in here. There's a bridge where the water runs under. Like I said, when I looked at the uh, the board, there's no prices on it. So, uh, are they going to make it out of the average person's pocket? I don't know. I just zoom right in over there on the main part of the building. So I'll take you back up to the stepping stones. 
and I'll leave it there. So I'm now at the lake at the top end and I think this is an artificial lake. I don't know whether it was created by the monastery originally and whether it powered a wheel or whether it was created when they landscaped Roach Abbey after its dissolution. So I'm uh, just going to show you the other end. You can see bulrushes right up there. Then I'll just take you back to where the stepping stones are. Like I say, I don't know whether this was all part of the big landscaping that happened probably in about the 1700s. Because it was like somebody's back garden at the time. Or whether this dates back to when the monastery was here. But I know it's a bit of attention to detail by me but these stepping stones all used to be in the same direction and somebody's decided to put two of them at an angle do not quite look right for me anymore just here so uh, I don't know if monks once walked across these or like I said these were after the monastery but it's a beautiful place to come and sit whether it's nice weather or not so nice weather so I hope you enjoy the quick tour around Roach Abbey.